consider this baby. This baby was born with Down syndrome. Down syndrome is caused by having an extra 21st chromosome. And it brings with it a host of developmental and medical challenges. This baby required intestinal bypass surgery on the third day of his life. We brought a Catholic priest in to baptize him because we did not know if he would make it off the operating table. And like roughly half the people born with Down syndrome, this baby had a serious heart defect. He had two holes in his heart. So before he was three months old, he underwent open heart surgery. Again, we did not know if he could survive the operation, but he could not live without it. So I want you to ask yourself, what chance did this baby have in our world? What were the possibilities? And the answer is, he could grow up to change the world. That is our youngest son, John Cronin, testifying before Congress for the second time. He has started a multi-million dollar social enterprise that spreads happiness. And he advocates for the rights of people with differing abilities. And every day, he shows us what's possible. So let's look at what's possible. Hi, um, I'm Jacques Cronin. Do not call my dad Mark. John, you have Down syndrome, right? I do. I have Down syndrome. Down syndrome never hold me back. No. Now, you may think this is going to be a talk about Down syndrome or about what we could do to help John. But listen carefully. It is about what John could do for his father, for his family, and for all of us. And we want to share a simple but powerful idea. People with differing abilities are not waiting for us to help them as much as they are waiting to help us, to show us what's possible. And John does that all the time. So you want to show people, John? Let's do it. Okay. So we're going to go back to the fall of 2016. And where were you? I, I'm in Huntington High School. And it's going to be my, my last year of school. Right? Now, what you may not know is that a person born with a disability anywhere in the United States can stay in the public school system until they turn 21. But then they say, get out. It's often known as the 21-year-old cliff. And John, what that means is that you're on your own. You gotta find not only work, but program supports, housing. And John was about to go over that 21-year-old cliff. But what did you tell me? I said, I wanna go into Bennett with my dad. I, I wanna have a nice father-son Bennett together. Right, and in that moment, I heard my son advocating for his future. I heard the natural entrepreneur turning a problem into an opportunity. And I thought he needed my help. But in fact, who had the brilliant business idea? I did, and I want, I want to start creating socks. Why socks? It's fun, it's colorful, it's creative. It always made me be me. I want crazy socks my whole life. Right? We used to drive around looking for those socks. And John understood. If he loved socks that much, surely other people would too. Right? And you didn't just say, let's sell socks. What else did you have? I have I, 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 a name. I told the website. Right? Now understand, we had no background in socks or fashion or retail. In fact, you used to joke that we were... Oh, uh, what? I uh, what? Knuckleheads uh, selling squishy socks. A couple of knuckleheads selling socks, right? 
And we were bootstrapping, which meant we had to make do with the resources we had. No excuses. So the only marketing we did was to set up a Facebook page, and I would take out my cell phone, and we made videos. Who was in those videos? I am. I talk about socks. Socks, socks, more socks. <laughs> and what day did we open? We opened on Friday, December 9th, 2016. And we didn't know what to expect. But it turns out those videos with John, he connected with customers. And we were ecstatic when that first day we got a flood of orders. And many of them were local. What did you do with those orders? We made our home deliveries. Right? We would load up the car, drive around, and you knocked on doors delivering socks. How'd the customers respond? Customers loved that socks, and I take a picture, a photo, and I share, I share, I share social media, a word against a spread. In fact, we had customers calling us up to order again just to get John to come back to their house. <laughs> And we heard from people that John was an inspiration for them. So we had tested the idea and we knew we could make a go of this, right? Now we love telling that origin story. It's full of joy, it's full of love. And I would hear from people saying, oh, that's a wonderful thing you're doing for your son. But John was the star. John was the one who knew how to connect with people, and he understood how to grow a business. And he understood what we were really doing. And spreading happiness. Right. John would reimagine what a business could do. He was baking his DNA into our business. And we would build it around happiness. And what do you say are the keys to happiness? A, a different others and gratitude. Yes. So how do you translate a love between a son and father and a business built around spreading happiness? How do you translate that into business? John knew. What would John do? We created a social enterprise, a business with both a social mission and a business mission that are indivisible and create this mighty force. And John knew we got to take care of customers. So what are some of the things you do for customers? What do you put in every package? A thickener from me and some candy. Right. <laughs> and what do you do every Tuesday? Every Tuesday, I have a dance party. Every Tuesday at 3 p.m. And, right. An online dance party. What could spread happiness more? And John is always connecting with customers meeting with them, speaking to them, talking to them on the phone, writing messages. And in fact, you have a birthday club, and if somebody joins that club, what do you do? I sing a happy birthday for you. Right? <laughs> and then there's gratitude. How does a business show gratitude? Again, what would John do? Some of it is a mindset. It's appreciating what we get to do. It's appreciating our colleagues and our customers. I love our customers. And, 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 and by giving back. You like to give back. So when we started, we pledged 5% of our earnings to... A better Olympics. I am better Olympic athlete. Right. And, and I love better Olympics. Yes. And there was more. John said, we should sell a Down syndrome sock. Now when we started, we weren't making any of our own socks, so we went looking for a Down syndrome sock. It turned out nobody made one. What'd you say? I said, I want to make one, I want to create one. So John designed the world's first Down syndrome awareness sock. Many have followed, right? But you were going to get back. So who does that raise money for? I raised it money to the National Down syndrome excite. Right. And he's gone on to create other awareness socks for causes, like? I like uh, autism and uh, cerebral palsy. Right. Pediatric cancer, pet rescue socks. You've made tribute socks for EMTs and firefighters. And uh, health uh, care superheroes. Right. All of this helped us grow our business, which meant we had to hire people. And who did you say we should hire? 
I, I had a, my friend and my classmates. Because he understood. Do for others, bring people along. And he understood. Don't look at what people can't do. Focus on what people can do. A very simple idea. Right? Don't be blinded by a person's limitations. Be awed by their possibilities. Right? And what do you say about people with differing abilities wanting to work? Are you ready, willing, able to work? So more than half of our employees have a differing ability. We hear all the time from other employees who say, oh, I can't find enough good workers. But we have a surplus of candidates, right? And what are the benefits? Well, you might think the benefits accrue to the people with differing abilities, but everybody is better off. Better morale, more productivity, better retention. Here's what we've learned. Hiring people with differing abilities is not altruism. It's good business. So let's go back. John had the idea to sell crazy socks. And when we started, we had 37 different socks. Today, how many different socks do we have? We have over then 3,000 different kinds of socks. So that idea John had, he is now the owner of the world's largest sock store. And he understands something. We're not really a sock store. Those socks are the physical manifestation of John's story and his mission. And that makes all the difference. No wonder EY named you Entrepreneur of the Year. We should get started. <laughs> but there's another part to this story, which is more personal and profound. We told you where John was in the fall of 2016. Where was I? You, you working with mom. Right? I had started working with my wife in what became our family business. Carol was very talented and did great work. But she suffered from chronic depression, which sometimes caused her to derail. She needed somebody with her. So we were working together with mom. Right? I, I was there too. And here's something we will tell you. Down syndrome, that's easy. Depression, as too many families know, that's hard. And depression can lead to irrational and self-destructive acts. Well, it turned out that several years earlier, Carol had dipped into a client account and then buried that secret. So in October of 2016, when John was going over that 21-year-old cliff, two police detectives showed up at our office door to arrest my wife. Overnight, we lost our family business. We lost our income. We had a massive debt to pay back. The woman I loved was facing jail time. And John had an uncertain future. And that's when you told me. I I want to go to uh, India Benny with my dad. I want to have a nice father and son together. When he first told me that, I heard him acting as an entrepreneur. But now I recognize. He was saying to me, Dad, I believe in you. You're not alone. You don't have to do this by yourself. We can do this together. The son I thought I had to help was lifting me up. John is just one person with a differing ability. But look what he could do given the opportunity. And that is the idea. People with differing abilities are not waiting for us to help them. They are waiting to help us, to show us what's possible, to help us be our best selves, to help our lives, our communities, and our businesses. We have to learn to let them do that. And John here, John is my hero. 
no matter how dark things got, John was there. And he always had faith and always knew what mattered. When I needed help, John was there to lift me up and lift our family up. Right? And John, you may be right. We are a couple of knuckleheads selling socks. <laughs> But together, together, we are going to change the world. world. I love you, son. I love you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs>